The caged system is amazing, but it can be a little bit overwhelming when it comes to actually finding an effective way to apply it to your guitar playing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my favorite way to put the caged system to work. So the caged system is just an acronym that we use to remember all of the basic chord shapes that make up just about every single chord on the guitar. And each of these five shapes has a major and minor variant. For example, we've got A major, and the minor variant, A minor. You can also continue to modify these shapes into any other chord. So we've got A major again, and we can play something like A major seven, or maybe A sus four. And this concept would work the exact same way with the remaining four chords from Caged and in every other position all over the fretboard. Now there's a concept that I like to call the home base. And this just involves creating a tight and condensed master shape that contains all the essential elements that you need to play in any key. So that means it's gonna include all of the naturally occurring chords from that key and their variations, as well as every single scale. Now we aren't gonna be covering any of the lead guitar aspects of this whole home base idea in this lesson, but we are gonna be using one scale, a very simple scale, and it's gonna serve as the foundation for this home base that we're gonna build. And that scale is just the minor pentatonic scale. So this one right here. Think of that as the basic outline for everything we're gonna learn. So every single chord shape we learn is gonna live in and around that shape. Now the reason this foundation is important is because depending on where you put that scale, obviously your master shape's gonna move, but it's gonna tell you which key you are playing this home bass or master shape in. And all you need to do to know that is to look at the notes on the low E string. So this note here is gonna tell you the major key that you're playing in, and this note right here is gonna tell you the relative minor key that you're playing in. So if I'm playing this master shape in this position, that means that this is a C, so all the chords that I'm playing are in the key of C major, or the relative minor key, which is A minor. Since these keys are relative, they contain all the same notes and all the same chords. Anytime I wanna move this shape into a different position, to know what key I'm in, I would just look at my foundation and I would just pay attention to this low E string and I would know, in this case, D major or the relative minor key, B minor. Okay, so now for the fun part, on top of this foundation, we are going to find all seven of our diatonic chords. And all that means diatonic just means naturally occurring inside of the key. So when we're playing in the key of C major, all the chords here are from the key of C major and they're all gonna sound good together. Together. Now, typically we'll number these chords one through seven, and this is really gonna help when you start moving the shape into other keys to remember the actual chord and how it operates inside of that key. So our one chord, so our C major chord inside of this key is gonna exist as a G major shape. And that shape's a little bit hard to actually play. Uh, it would look like this. Right, so barring is gonna make that pretty complicated, but as with learning triads and many other chord shapes on the guitar, you usually aren't gonna be wanting to play a full bodied chord that is using up so much sonic space, stepping on other instruments' toes. So you can absolutely just play. Any little group of notes there is totally fine. And something you might have noticed, which is the case with a lot of cage chords, because they're really all connected with each other, is that when I play this G shape, I've actually got a little A shape in there as well. Onto our two chord, which is a D minor, that's gonna look like this. It's just your basic A minor bar chord shape, so it's based on the A shape. Uh, and you can play it as a bar, or you can just play a little group of those notes. Totally up to you. Onto chord number three, and unfortunately for this one, this shape is not gonna be right inside, but it is attached to our foundation, and it is the same chord shape, so this A minor chord shape, just slid up two frets. And that's the three chord of our key. Now onto our four chord, this is gonna be based on a C major shape. This is another one that's really hard to play the full chord shape because it requires kind of a little bit of a difficult bar. Right there, that is our four chord. In this case, this is an F major chord. And once again, with a shape like this, you can feel free to just play a little section of the chord. Right? That one actually right there is a D shape, right? Lives right inside. Like I said, a lot of them are interconnected. Onto our five chord, the best way to think about this one is as a D shape. It's gonna look like this. You can feel free to just play 
that little section of it, that's perfectly fine. If you remember back to our four chord, right? It's basically just sliding that D shape up. Obviously, there's also that connected C shape to our five chord, but then we're really getting out of our home base. We're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna view it as that D shape. On to the all important chord number six. This one is just gonna be based on an E minor shape, and it's just an E minor shape bar chord. Right, and once again, if you're not comfortable playing this bar chord, you can just play one of the smaller shapes. One important thing to note is that sometimes when you play a smaller shape inside the bigger shape, you might be accidentally leaving out one of the important notes from that chord. For example, with this E minor shape, if I were to just play the lowest three notes, I would actually be leaving out the minor third of this chord. And in a lot of cases, that might be fine. It essentially becomes a power chord because it's just the root fifth and then an octave of the root again. But if you do want to have that minor third in there, just be conscious that one of those notes in there is that note. Now, finally, we arrive at chord number seven, and this is always a weird one because we have to make some weird adjustments to the chord for it to actually fit into a key. All of our chords are major or minor, but in this case, we actually have to play a half diminished chord for it to just use notes from the key. Uh, so you can use this in chord progressions, absolutely, but you're just gonna find yourself maybe not using it as much as the other six. So this shape is gonna be based on an E minor shape, but we have to make some important modifications. So instead of just just a regular minor bar chord shape. For it to fit in this key, we have to play something called a minor seven flat five chord, and that is gonna look like this. Okay, we're not gonna play the highest two strings because to play the full shape all the way, we have to do some very weird things with our hands. It doesn't really work, so you just play the lowest four strings. As you can hear, that seven chord really wants to pull to that one chord, so that can be a really great use for it. So that is all seven diatonic chords condensed down into one master shape, giving us our home base. All I'd have to do to play in a different key is slide this whole thing up or down the fretboard, and all of a sudden you get the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chords in the new key that I'm in. The whole idea with this home base concept is to give you a place where you can always fall back on and feel comfortable no matter what key you're playing in. This is especially useful for jamming, songwriting, and just playing with other musicians in general. From here, you should go check out my more comprehensive video on building a home base. It's gonna cover some of the stuff that we learned in this video, and it's gonna take all that stuff a lot further, touch on lead guitar concepts and things like that. That video will be up on the screen for you now, so go check it out. If you wanna support the channel, I'll have a link to my Patreon page at the top of the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.